YouTube, I'm just making a short video on explaining drywall tapes. I'm in my personal garage, the reason I'm making this video because I gotta load up my truck for tomorrow, I got a busy day tomorrow, and I had to get some tape. In the drywall world, we have two different types of tapes, go-to tapes. We have a paper tape, and then we have a mesh fiberglass tape. I'm gonna explain the two differences of tapes. In the repair business, our go-to item is a drywall fiberglass tape. When we're taping new houses, Big drywall jobs, maybe over 10 sheets, where you have to use a bazooka or hand taping process or filling big gaps, then we might go with the paper tape. But let me explain the difference. This fiberglass tape, I keep several rolls. I always keep about a month or so on hand. But this fiberglass tape, I like this one. This is special stuff I get from a drywall supplier that's by my house. This is a nice fiberglass. When I do patches, I always get the one that has a big hole insert. So I keep the fiberglass handy when I'm working and I'm doing patchwork. With this fiberglass tape, it does have a sticky mesh behind it, so you can put it on new drywall and new patches. The benefits of using a fiberglass tape is that it is a stronger material. It is fiberglass, so you can put it over the seams, and it has more resistance from cracking and separation. It will crack. There are some instances where it might crack, and that usually is the different muds that are used and the temperature, and a lot of stuffs can vary. But for a stronger bond, we use a fiberglass tape. With the fiberglass tape, we usually do this on repair jobs where we do hot mud process. Like we do, we mix a 5 minute mud or a 20 minute mud or even a 40 or 90 minute mud and then we're able to fiberglass it right away without having to put mud on the seam first. So we just put this on the sheetrock or the patches, we bond it on the patches and then we're able to mix a quick set material and put it right over the tape right away. And then once that hot mud, quick set mud sets up, then we could trowel it down, slick it out, and then we could turn around and do a second coat. And then we return that process and do the same thing again. And then we can turn around and get it second coated and even do a third coat and texture it all in the same day. One trip job. We do a lot of repair work, so we do one trip in and out, in and out. So we use a lot of fiberglass tapes for patchwork, repairs, and stuff that we want to get done in one day or one trip. Another hand, the paper tape does have its benefits. This is mostly used in the bazooka. They have a bazooka. It's a very expensive tool that tapers use usually to tape new houses or room additions when there's a lot of sheetrock to be taped. This process you have to put it in the bazooka or if you do it by hand you actually have to put down a layer of fairly thin mud. It's not soupy thin. It's like a, it's in between a, I would just say a thick, thick pancake batter that you use to tape it. So you have to put the mud down first and then you have to put down the paper tape. And the paper tape here, if you can see, it's kind of hard to see in the video. It does have a crease. Most people don't know that. They just think they put the tape on however. If it creases this way, you have to put the crease edge on the drywall. If you usually put the crease edge this way against the wall, then you can get a bulge out where that crease is. So I always like to make sure that the part that creases in inward goes towards the wall area. And there's different jobs. Some jobs vary where you have to customize or do this or do that. But there's a lot of advantages to paper tape. Like when we do a round wall or angle, I like to use paper tape and angles. You can still use fiberglass, but the paper tape, you can crease it like that, and then you can use it in the angles of sheetrock whenever you have an angle. So on the angle, you'd have to put mud, strike each side of it, the 90 degree angle, and then you'd have to do the tape, and then you'd have to trowel it down with your knife. The basic six inch knife, four inch knife, whatever it takes, and you have to just slick it out and get all the excess mud. You have to make sure you have all mud underneath it. You can't just have mud here, mud there, mud there, or you get what's called blisters. You don't want to get blisters. If you get blisters the next day, you'll know, because when you go to look at the tape, you'll see little pockets. Basically, they're air pockets where there wasn't no mud, and the paper's starting to blister or bubble up. If you do get blisters, then you have to go through, actually, and cut them out, and then either retape the area or mud over it. So that's one disadvantage of using paper tape, is that you do get blisters if you don't have enough mud on it. And using the paper tape is always a messier process. So on repair jobs, if it's a bigger job, I like to use it in angles. Maybe if it's a big gap in the drywall, maybe someone hung the sheetrock themselves and they're just hiring me to come fill in gaps or whatever. I usually do a pre-fill in big gaps, and if they're really bad, we might even do a layer of paper tape and let it set overnight so it really bonds and secures. You could use hot muds with paper tape, but I don't recommend it because hot muds, unlike joint compounds, they don't shrink back. With the paper tape, with the regular joint compound, it tends to shrink back just a little bit, just enough, so you don't get a big bulge on the wall. So if you do use these in angles with hot mud, you have to be good with your mud and really know what you're doing. For someone that never worked with hot mud, I don't recommend using hot mud with paper tape. If you are going to use hot mud, then the go-to item, of course, is your fiberglass tape. Fiberglass is pretty simple. There's, you know, everybody thinks you just put it on. There is a proper way of cutting it. I like to use my drywall knife, and if you get it right straight, it just snaps right off. 
if you don't get it right on the money, then you get these little hair, fiberglass hairs, and then you have to pick those out. So they do get troublesome. Some guys like to put the fiberglass on the actual wall, then cut it. An easier technique for patchwork is just, you know, if I have a one foot patch, I'll just cut a piece, cut a piece, cut a piece. And then I have my pieces and then I can put them on. And once you put on the sheetrock, you want to slick them out. There's plenty of bonding here. Some tapes, when they get old, they lose the bonding. And sometimes in the summer, when it gets warm, that bonding really gets sticky. So I always like to keep fresh tape. When you buy new tapes, good tapes, they always have plastic on them to protect them. I keep all my stuff in a thing here in my garage just to keep my materials from getting moisture and stuff like that. But paper tapes are good. Like, like I did a job where it was a round wall, like an arch wall, a round wall. So with the fiberglass, it's kind of hard to do a round tape. So whenever we do a rounded wall, we like to do what's called a tear tape method. So we just take these little tabs and maybe every inch or so, we do little cuts, little cuts, little cuts, little cuts, little cuts. And then that creates an area where you can actually bend the tape. And that you want to use regular joint compound. And with regular joint compound, it's the, the old style method when it's a bigger job where you coat it, you have to let it dry overnight, turn around, second coat it, dry, sanding, sanding, sanding. So I, I recommend using that technique if you're not really good with drywalling. Always use a joint compound because that way if you do make mistakes, at least you can sand it down the next day. And with the hot muds, it's more intermediate, professional, because if you do use it, once it sets up, it sets up. And it's not like regular joint compound where you can sand it real easily. When it set, sets up, it sets up like a strong cement. So if you do sand it, you really got to sand it hard. And I don't recommend ever sanding hot muds unless you really have to. There's a technique in my other video on how to work with the hot muds. And we usually do a wet knife slicking process, which requires a six inch knife and a damp sponge where you slick out the hot muds before they set up. But that's enough with the hot muds. That's a whole nother video. But you can see with these paper tapes, you can make all kinds of niches. So you can get more custom around arches and bins and stuff like that. Another advantage of paper tape is if I, let's say around a plumbing pipe or something, if I have a copper pipe sticking out, I could do a technique like this. I get the paper tape and then it, I just cut, okay, the gap's that big. And I can cut the paper tape like that. And then here's a pipe. And then I would just crease the tape like this. And then I would just cut a little hole like that. And now I got a little patch where the pipe can actually stick through there and it'll cover the thing. Another technique with paper tape, if you didn't want to really put a heavy coat on it, it's called the tear tape method. Because the tape right here has a nice square edge. When you cut it, it kind of feathers out the tape. It's not so aggressive, sharp, square edges. So a tear tape method, this is a trick that we learned a long time ago. So a basic tear tape method is where you, you just basically tear off the papers like this and you get rid of that sharp corner. So now you can just basically, you can customize your patch piece. So and without the tear tape, when you go to do a first coat of mud, it feathers in a lot better with that tear tape method. There's a lot of different ways. If I'm not able to get the pipe actually in the hole, I can do another technique like this. I could take my tear tape, just cut a piece, and then cut my hole for my pipe, and then I could just go around it. Well, I can't get the pipe in there because there's an angle stop or something big. So another technique to do is either you could tear it in half like this, and then you could join it together around the pipe, make a nice tight fit wherever you want. So there's a lot of advantages with paper tape versus fiberglass. Fiberglass is stronger. I've seen guys where they actually did fiberglass, paper tape, and all that. So you just got to get comfortable with quick repair jobs that you want to make sure they probably won't crack. I always recommend on gaps, you always pre-fill them and let those pre-fill dries. And then you put a layer of this fiberglass and then you can turn around and mud it. But these are just basic advantages of the fiberglass versus a paper tape. Another advantage of the paper tape is I got this little tool here. This is a very handy tool if you want to hand tape. It's a cheap little tool and it basically clips onto your belt. So I can clip it onto the side of my belt and I always have the tape handy. So this is just like hand taping and stuff like that because when you're working with pans and knives you don't have a third hand to grab tape. So it's a good tool to grab so you can grab whatever tape you need and do the job as you go. Move to this wall I can have the tape right there so you're not bending over grabbing more tape. It's always on your belt side. So that's a nice cheap tool to have. Um, I'm sure you can use it with the fiberglass, but I never really did it. I just have this handy, so if I ever have to do jobs where I have to take paper tape. There's certain jobs that require paper tape. The paper tape, like in garages. Garages, I know out here, they, they, they're code. They have to be fire taped. They call it, if you ever heard that expression, fire taping. So they have to be fire taped, and all that is is per code is sheetrock at least has to be tape, fire taped. It doesn't even need to be first coated. They just fire tape it. So a lot of new houses, that's why you'll see where they're just sheetrock and maybe a tape on the seams and that's it and they'll sell the house like that because they don't mud it or texture it so that's what they call a fire taping per code and that's per code at least out here it is so these are the two different tape tapes that we use i mostly do drywall repairs so i always go to my fiberglass i like this fiberglass i do buy 
at least 10 rolls at a time so I'm good for a month or so so I don't run out I like these ones because they're around my hands so I can work with my pans and knives and I have my tape handy so when I'm going through and doing patches I usually have my tool belt or I have a bucket for smaller patches I go around hang it and I have my tape right here handy so I can move 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 and go from room to room wall to wall and just tape as I go whenever I do patches I tape as I go I don't like to do all the patches and go back I just do everything all in step process so these are the two different tapes that we use so fiberglass and paper there are advantages of either and there's disadvantages so I recommend people that they just use a regular fiberglass tape on your patchwork and just use a regular joint compound the joint compound will dry overnight and if you do make the mud too heavy there's a bulge at least you can sand it down either with an 80 grit sandpaper 100 grit 120 150 it's just how bad is it how bad do we got to sand it 80 grit of course is a real coarse so usually on our first coat we always sand with an 80 grit and then the second coat will usually finish it off with either a 100 grit or a 150 and then to finish off sanding texture the last finish sanding we either use a 150 180 200 or 220 if you really know what you're doing you could use a 100 grit but i recommend either 80 grit for first coat and 150 to 200 grit for the finished sanding but these are the differences i just want to make a short video because i'm out in my garage basically loading up for tomorrow that's what i do i get myself and get my truck loaded up for tomorrow's projects and i'll make more videos on as i go along on these jobs but hey thanks for watching the video and please subscribe and like i said this is i'm not i'm just a drywaller here and i'm making videos i have basic stuff here nothing fancy you don't need all the fancy tools to be a drywaller i just got my basic paper tape fire glass i got a bunch of sponges i just buy stuff when it's on sale and i just basically keep my basic tools here and the rest of my truck and of course in my garage i got a whole lot more but these are just the basics for drywall repairs but hey get yourself some fiberglass tape all right thank you